we are going now to the final session of the day, and it's about, again, addressability. So we're talking about industry readiness for the new addressability area. And we have our final uh, moderator who is going to be Pete Dex, VP of product at Magnite. Please, big welcome and applause. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Uh, last session, great news. Uh, thanks for um, bearing with us. I think it's been a great topic so far. We are fully hybrid for my panel. I've got two great guests to welcome on the stage. And then at some point, two amazing guests will appear on the screen. But let's do the real life uh, first. We can welcome my physical guests. That would be great. And we'll let the technology bit do its bit when we can. So, um, yeah, look, I'm Pete. Um, I, I work on the supply side um, uh, at, at Magnite, but actually also uh, work really closely with Helen and the team at IAB. Uh, and lead a working group on this topic. So post third party cookies and addressability, uh, which is what we're here to talk about today. My two real life guests, I'll let you guys introduce yourself first and then we'll go to uh, virtual afterwards. Maybe. Sarah, you first? Yeah, yeah sure. sure, thank you. Hi, I'm Sarah Sihelnik and I'm the country director for the DAF region at Quancast. We are a programmatic DSP. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy to be part of this panel and be one of those uh, that can sit here in real. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. My name is Nadim, uh, Nadim Kureshi. I'm working with BCM, which is a large sales house in Germany. And I'm leading the product management at BCM and happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And then I'll, we'll go over to our, our virtual members of the panel who's at the top. We've got Samir. Samir, if you could perhaps uh, kick off and say hi. Yeah, of course. So hi, everyone. I'm Samir, uh, VP of Global Field Marketing at Augury, uh, based in London. And part of the ones affected today not being able to travel, so uh, so sorry of not being here in person. And uh, Augury at a glance is just a global ad tech company uh, that focused on privacy. Thanks, Samir. And Andy. Hi, thank you. Uh, my name's Andy. Um, I'm based at Index Exchange, which is an SSP, and I manage our publisher relationships here in the UK. Um, and to echo Samir's comment to I actually bumped into it at the plane at the airport this morning. Um, sorry, I can't be there in person, but thanks for having me to the event anyway. Thanks, everyone. Well, look, there's um, uh, there's no no prizes for making a flight or not making a flight. It's all of our control. So, uh, and this is a great example of technology working at its finest. We're going to touch on a bunch of things, addressability focus. We're going to start very quickly kind of reflecting on the past, the very recent past, and then we're going to dive into more sort of future facing topics. So um, July was a bit of a U-turn from our friends at Google and Privacy Sandbox. Uh, so really keen just first of all to hear how that impacted each of you and, and specifically kind of your teams, your business, your operation or, or your clients. Um, we'll go around the same order again. Then. So Sarah, yeah, what? It was a big change. Some people were always expecting it. Others were completely caught uh, by surprise. Uh, what's changed since then for you? Yeah, I mean, from a com from us as Quancas perspective and, and our way of approaching the topic around the addressability um, gap, nothing changed, nothing. Because um, the truth is, as we all know, and we probably won't talk or hopefully won't talk too long about it, like the internet already today is, you know, um, very much reliant on uh, or not having third party cookies active. Most users cannot be addressed with third party cookies. So that's just the status quo and nothing changed there um, in terms of how, how we are continuing, you know, to, de to develop our technology. On the other side, though, I think when it comes to the advertisers, the marketeers, I think there's a lot that were probably relieved by this news. Um, hoping that they get more time to to you know figure out their strategy and their testing, um, but yeah, I mean we probably will touch on that. Um, what's the right strategy? But I think uh, no one should change their strategy because of what one company might decide. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Nadine, nothing changed. Everything changed. So anywhere in between. I will say the same. Just one word. Nothing. Nothing. So I can pretty much second what nothing. you just said. All right. So even for us as a sales house. Um, I mean, we are preparing ourselves for quite some time, time now. For three, four years, there were several announcements from Google, always some delays. Now there is some other kind of announce, announcement, which we interpret as um, cookies will still go away, just the time frame is different. And, and it will be the choice of users to 
get rid of cookies. So it will happen definitely. The question is only when, finally. So yeah, we were um, as a sales house busy uh, preparing ourselves for that for that time. I think even today we are not dependent on a cookie anymore. So if the cookie would go away tomorrow, we have our solutions in place, our ecosystem is prepared for that. But we still see, of course, a much lower eCPM on cookie inventories, which um, still needs to be fixed. And I think the, um, the, 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 um, the way how it should be fixed is by encouraging the demand side more uh, using technologies like IDs, first party data, and data clean. Well, we'll come to some of those in, in a bit more detail. Thank you very much. Um, Samir, uh, echo that or, or more of a shift for you? No, definitely uh, definitely aligned uh, with what was mentioned. I think um, the, the, the shift uh, from Google in phasing um, out you know, third-party cookies um, was just essentially kind of letting custom consumers know whether they wanted to be tracked or not. Uh, and, uh, and something that I think is pretty important to note as well is that they're still investing pretty heavily in privacy sandbox. So um, for me and for Augury in general, that means that Google definitely anticipates the fact um, that third-party cookies, you know, will play a minimal role uh, in the future. So to to answer the second part of your of your question, um, at Augury, very similar to to what was mentioned since the beginning of the panel, the approach hasn't changed at all. We uh, anticipated the shift a long time ago. Uh, and we've been working uh, for many years in developing what is called uh, personal personal based um, targeting. So um, essentially, uh, the, the, the advice that I want to give to everyone here today on the on the call is that let's not wait for any other industry announcement. And let's not view Google changing timelines as a reason to uh, to slow down on innovation, or um, yeah, just uh, just trying new uh, new things out. The future is definitely cookie-less, and we need to start embracing it as an industry. For sure, thank you, Andy. Um, yeah, I'm I'm basically in line with everyone else who's answered. Which I, I guess, first of all, I'd say is a really positive thing because it's it's nice that there's a collective focus across the industry still to um, move forward on testing. Um, certainly, if I look at index specifically, we are still very focused on ensuring that we are ready and we're supporting our partners to be ready for the release of sandbox um to the extent that at the start of this year uh, so in january time um we released a a sandbox which we um shared sorry we engineered a sandbox and a prototype which we shared with the ib tech lab which we then made publicly available so that partners could test and start sort of playing around with the apis coming out of the sandbox that's something which we've been building and iterating on throughout the year. And actually, as recently as July, we released um, some information around a study we've run with around 100 publishers and 10 DSPs, defining what we saw as the results of running through Sandbox. So I think these are things which we're going to continue to do and to continue to work on because Google, you know, they have they have perhaps moved the goalposts in terms of what's going to happen, but there's still going to be a point at which the third port, the third party cookie pool is, is significantly eroded. Thank you. I'm loving all this. Uh, we're, we're in control of our ecosystem, it seems, which is great. So look, we said we wouldn't dwell much on, on the past. Let's talk about sort of now moving to the future um, and some solutions, which we said we definitely focus on uh, for the next sort of few, few questions. Let's start with scale. Um, interested to... Well, we'll say nothing's changed, you know, rewind a few years ago and every ad request had a cookie and at some point maybe none will. So does that present a scale challenge or are there key solutions uh, or strategies already in place which address the, so the scale issue? So we'll start with kind of the big targeting stuff and we'll go opposite way around. That's OK. So I'll kick it back to you. Sure, no problem. Um, so I think we... <sighs> As a, as a business, we take an agnostic approach to working with different partners. So we support different ID solutions. So um, UID 2.0, Ramp ID, um, Merkel's ID solution. And we continue um, and want to work with as many partners as possible because our recommendation is that our, our partners have a portfolio approach to addressability. And we think it's essential because it allows you to align um, with, I guess, regulatory goals while also ensuring that you can reach audiences flexibly. Um, I think probably where we see the strongest growth or the strongest focus is on ensuring that um, 
testing is occurring with a buy side and the sell side working collaboratively together. And I think actually something like seller defined audiences, for example, is going to become increasingly important and meaningful adoption on the buy side and marketers and DSPs is going to be critical. And I think we anticipate growing interest in the coming months. So although it's no replacement and there isn't going to be a capsule replacement to the cookie because obviously it's so integrated across um, different technical solutions and systems it's an opportunity for publishers to regain control um, and use another tool in their toolkit they can offer to market if I'm thinking about particularly seller defined audiences and same question around scale then to, to you Samir yeah, so um, I think I would say that essentially competition is just going to get tougher as we uh, as we continue to focus on uh, on scale. So obviously, less ad placement that won't support support um, identifiers will mean that essentially the cost of reaching those audiences through uh, traditional methods is essentially going to uh, to climb even faster. So for me, the real um, answer um, and key to navigating the shift is essentially uh, how are we going to be able to embrace privacy uh, in the future. So. Uh, um, I would say now more than ever, essentially, brands and agencies, um, they need to invest even more heavily uh, in solutions that will be scalable and that will be future proof, uh, ready to adapt to essentially whatever change that will come up within the uh, within the industry. So um, as I've briefly mentioned at the beginning, um, in, at, at Augury, we've been working on a Essentially, we've been leading the way on uh, on privacy uh, focused advertising since uh, since a pretty long time. We've been running cookie-less and ID-less um, campaigns as well for years, and the approach essentially centers around a solution called zero-party data, where consumers essentially willingly um, share their preferences and intentions. So, um, for those who are less familiar with zero-party data and what that means, it's essentially information um, that consumers willingly and choose to uh, to provide directly. That could be their preferences, that could be their purchase intentions, or how they want to be recognized uh, by brands. So very different than first party data, where obviously it's uh, a bit more passively uh, collected or third party data, which is essentially uh, outsourced uh, from, uh, from outside sources. Zero party data is essentially beyond on transparency and consent, uh, which I think makes it both ethical and powerful as we think about privacy and as we think about um Scale. And I think this is probably what's going to drive a uh, real impact within the industry uh, um, as we uh, as we become privacy first. Thank you. Then I'm going to change the question. I'm just like in the room, just see if we can get a little bit of frictional debate. Zero party data or first party data, does it scale? Like, is that going to be part of the solution? It must be part of the solution. So there will be different ways how to collect data from users. Uh, so we... Um, um, are not fixed to any of these solutions, but we, we think um, dependent on which publisher you have, which environment you have, you have to choose between different uh, variants of uh, solutions. So we do also support zero party data solutions like Paul widgets, for example. And we do also have solutions in place to collect first party data with our BMP, um, data that is collected from our um, CM systems and so on. Yeah. Sarah? Yeah, I'm happy to add some controversial insight <laughs> into it because you can see that's what you're looking for. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, so what was mentioned, you know, zero party data, first party data and ID solutions. I mean, let's start and, and go through the most common alternative signals, if you want to call that, um, you know, to the third party cookie. ID signals are probably like the most accurate or deterministic one but they definitely have a scale issue and even if you have a technology that can utilize all the id solutions that are out there it's probably not going to be enough that's the truth right now right it's very it's um yeah accurate but it's not going to be enough to solve your um scalability uh, goal um so then you have the the, the thing around the first party data zero party data then let's go to the other side of the the other extreme which is contextual that's probably the one you can scale the most but you lose then you know your accuracy mostly and so what we believe in in quantcast and i think this is the, the these are the technologies that i believe are going to really survive are the ones that are capable to use all of them and utilize all of them and combine them. So, you know, not just being uh, agnostic, but also, also having a multi-signal 
um, capability because only then you can guarantee that at any time, no matter what kind of information are available in the bitstream, you are able to do some sort of accurate targeting and also measurement. So I think that's that's the approach with, that we, at least in Juancasta, are following. I know we are not the only ones, but um, and that's also one of the harder ways because it's it's really difficult to be able to combine all these different signals because you have to imagine they come in all sorts of different shapes and forms, right? And uh, bringing them together in that you know short period of time. Um, and making sense of them to then be able to tar target accurately and measure accurately is really, really difficult. Thank so, you. So maybe a follow-up question on this. Uh, what is your recommendation for us as a publisher network um, when it comes to sending data for the bitstream or uh, convincing, making advertisers work with that data? Yeah, I think being also able to to so being agnostic and not just relying on one sort of signal as well, you know, being open maybe also to share your data. I mean, what the reason why um, Quancas can do that is also because we have a huge first party data set from publishers due to our history where we come from as a company. We started as a measurement company trying to help publishers to understand their audience. So then that they can basically monetize their ad inventory more efficiently. So, and that tool is free, but in return, we get access to that data. So, and that, that's a true, I think, um, useful collaboration between buy and sell side, mm -hmm. where both profit from it. Um, but yeah, that would be something that would give us an answer. Cool. Maybe the solutions, which is, which is great. Um, I, think, I think it might've been uh, Jana, you took it on, who talked about it's not identity or context, right? We, these things can be bundled together. Mm -hmm. These things work better when they are together. So I think that's a really important sort of uh, perspective for us to take. You touched on measurement. We, we're going to shift gears into measurement. Um, I, I feel like the industry to some degrees made peace of the idea that when you put these solutions together, scale is somewhat solvable. Uh, we can reach mm -hmm. the people we, we want to reach. But I think you said it in as many words that the more solutions we use, potentially then there's more metrics to worry about. So let's stay with you if that's okay, Sarah, but measurement, what is the new KPIs or how do you think about metrics and KPIs generally in, in this new era when it's not all just tied into a third party cookie like it used to be? Yeah, I think first, the first step is just to acknowledge or feeling comfortable that, okay, we are moving into a world and where we, we start to talk about a more modeled mm -hmm. measurement approach, right? So it's not as deterministic as it was before, but we also have different techniques technological capabilities so that our modeled um, or the models that we then use for, for measurement are not the same as, you know, a couple of years ago. So there's um, huge advancement um, yeah, progress there made as well. And, and that's the first step. So not being afraid if you start talking about its modeled conversions. And, um, and yeah, maybe another thing which I think is like the next thing that I see coming where when we're talking to advertisers, um, we see this challenge that you have this environment, like you have the situation now where you still have the third party cookies sometimes around, um, and then you have those, you know, cookie environments. And there is a different approach of how the measurement is happening there. But we feel like the people are comparing those two, right? And then they start saying, okay, one thing is that my ECPMs are lower in the cookie list environment, but then you know, my, my CPA there is higher. Yeah, because it's a different way of measuring. It's it's a modeled approach oftentimes um, that only gives fractional um, attribution to each conversion. And then it seems like it's performing less, you know, than the cookie base, but actually those two aren't really comparable. So you enter a whole different new kind of conversation, which um, it reminds me a little bit, you know, seven years ago or five years ago when we were still debating around post view versus post click and the whole attribution topic. Um, so now this kind of comes up next, you know, and I think a lot of people are still talking about that. Well, how do you measure it? Da, 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 da. But, you know, I think we should move on. And now the next step is to actually acknowledge, okay, we can't really compare. Well, how do we compare those two environments to each other? I'll come back to you in, in the room, but just, just uh, on, on the call then, I mean, um, thoughts on measurement, Anything that's changed 
or any newer metrics that are harder to land with, with clients or, or sort of um, with your operation? It'd be fascinating to hear. Andy, I'll start with you. Um, so I'm going to kind, I'm going to give you a kind of um, sitting on the fence answer in that we <laughs> we tend to offer a multiple range of solutions to our clients around measurement, depending on what they're looking to work with. I guess because we don't want to advocate on behalf of a particular type of solution. It's not a a focus for us as a business trying to recommend one over the other. We are hard pressed to say yes or no to something and how it works. I appreciate that's that's somewhat equivocating from my answer, but that's yeah, we we continue to support whatever our clients are looking to work with, but we recommend testing a wider range of solutions to to deliver on the results which are needed. Yep, thank. I'll I'll push you on that answer in a bit then, Andy. Um, Samir, yeah, yeah stick with measurement for a bit, and then um, I can hear your thoughts. Sure. I, I think you know mine is actually pretty similar to uh, to Andy. I think the the priorities that we keep seeing in the market, or the way I will essentially group them, are in three buckets. So um, what impact do they want to drive? Um, making sure um that the brand stays memorable and building essentially consumer trust. I think are probably uh, the three ways you know we should be uh, we should be measuring this. Um, capturing consumer attention is probably another one as well. That's uh, that's pretty important. What we need to uh, to focus, and then obviously, I think uh, pretty straightforward. But reaching the the, the right audience um, is obviously the foundation of any successful campaign. Um, and again, if we take back to zero party data, that's how we're able to essentially uh, provide. Um, provide this for, for our customers uh, here at Augury. Uh, we're able to essentially kind of target those group um, of, of consumer instead of individual users, which makes it um, obviously uh, more interesting to uh, dive into the insights that we've been able to gather and, um, and essentially uh, really uh, diving into, uh, into what success uh, looks like um, for them as well, all while respecting uh, privacy for the, for the consumer. Thanks. Final thoughts on measurement? I would say there's nothing much more to add from my side. Also, as a publishing network, um, I must say I'm not too much into me measurement. So I find interesting what the other panelists had to say. Yeah, and, and it sounds like theoretically we will probably agreed on some of the approaches. I wonder if the specific tactics are in place just yet. And I think that's maybe an area for us to, you know, as an industry to explore in, in the com coming quarters is that cookie drop off inevitably is going to happen one way or another. Um, we'll see whether the theory actually uh, washes its face in practice. It'll be more interesting uh, to find out for sure. One of the ways we'll solve that is good radio DJ linking to our sort of final topic around knowledge and learning. Um, I think some of the survey data threw this up as well, and we hear this a fair bit around knowledge gaps. This is all still quite new. Um, a number of these solutions or strategies aren't even really proven out yet. We've, we've talked a bit about theory just now, but there are certain things that haven't really been put into practice yet because it's hard to isolate sort of cookie-free environments today, for example. So wanted to hear from everyone thoughts on where learning and knowledge sits, uh, not just uh, internally, but also clients and externally as well. So Andy, I'll come back to you. No, no equivocating. Um, I want to hear um, <laughs> some specific learning uh, disciplines and, and stuff you're working on. Yeah. That's that's fair and right to call me out. Um, <laughs> so look, to to answer your question, we we want as many clients to test sandbox and addressability solutions in general as quickly and as often as possible. Um, as I, I mentioned earlier on when I was talking, that we we run a fairly large scale test with over a hundred publishers, ten DSPs. Um, a result of that, for example, we saw a quite a significant drop in CPMs running through Sandbox, which is around 33%. Um, now, I think it's incumbent upon all parties who are in this ecosystem to continue to test and see what happens when they run different ID solutions and continue learning from that. Um, I think, you know, uh, if, if you're going to ask me to call out something specifically, I'd say it'd be great to see the buy side lean into working with publishers. Um, I think also... I have a fear that um, people might bury their heads in the sand like they kind of did with the ATT prompt. So I came from the uh, the app side business prior to working at Index and there was a uh, a sort of ostrich effect where people waited to see what happened. ATT was implemented and there were significant declines in revenue. So test, learn with your partners, lean into companies who are focused on this space 
quick plug for index we have a a learning um a series of learning videos which describe our approaches and understandings and findings from running sandbox tests which is available um on our website which you can take a look at there's lots of information out there um but i think the most important thing is to test and ask and keep on driving for more details great stuff thank you uh, samir yeah knowledge learning where does it fit in your world yeah, same. So pretty important for us. So we do have that approach. Um, we do essentially have an insights department um, at Augury uh, that dives into those personas. They're able to essentially pull um, so many insights um, from them. So um, I would say, you know, um, collaboration, um, asking the right questions and making sure that we are all um, adopting the same standards uh, as an industry and as different part of the ecosystem is definitely going to be key in making this a, a, a success. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so, uh, definitely, uh, pretty important for, for us at Augury. Thanks. Yeah. I love the word collaboration. It's partly, I think why we're all here, right? There's competitors, there's friends, there's frenemies, but that's kind of the whole point. This, these problems are bigger than any individual company. Um, back in the room, uh, I'll, I'll start, start here with sort of knowledge and learning. It sounds like, um, pretty important part for you. You've already said you're doing that on stage as we speak, but yeah, talk a bit about the, how it works in the industry for you. Yeah. So I think we must distinguish between a different, um, mechanisms that we have, the different post cookie solutions, mm -hmm. starting from IDs, I would say it's not um, very easy to determine the value of an ID. And I think every uh, user or client of an ID provider has to um, determine whether it makes sense to work with an ID partner and if the costs are, um, uh, yeah, makes sense to pay uh, that are behind the solution. Um, I think it's wrong to only take a look at what's happening in the open auction, because there are more use cases than simply forwarding an ID in the open auction. Another use case that we look at is um, the audience building. So we use um, different IDs for audience segmentation use cases. Uh, and we see a lot of benefits already as of today. We, we, we can increase our um, um, our target audience by more than 30 to 70%, depending on the segment type, using these IDs in cookie-less environments. Um, so that's uh, regarding the IDs. For first-party data, uh, we did a lot of tests um, challenging our first-party data against third-party data. So we are, are, since the beginning of the year, completely rid of third-party data. For all our um, direct campaigns, we only use first-party data because it's simply outperforming. So we see more reach, we see a higher click-through rate and more conversions. So nothing more to add on this, I think. Thank you very much. Sarah, final thoughts on knowledge and learning, and then we're going to wrap up. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think it's it's really clear from all these and there's thousands and thousands of campaigns we've run since like around 21, 2021, that... Um, running cookie-less, activating those environments only gives you um, incremental reach and um, actually allows you to yeah, really reach a, a incremental new audience that you're otherwise not reaching. We're seeing how often there is a correlation between those cookie-less environments and a more affluent kind of target audience as well due to like the, you know, Safari, Apple end devices and so on, all this kind of stuff. Um, in terms of other learnings, like when it comes to measurement, I mean, that's a great example where, you know, we as an industry come more closer together. We work with, you know, ad servers like the Google Campaign Manager or Flash Docking to kind of calibrate our modeled conversion approach to make sure our models are, you know, not completely off and like we, we, we are somewhere aligned. And we got that down to like, I think around 5% at the moment, which is, which is really, really good. Um, so yeah, and then and then looking a bit more into the future, I mean, I mentioned at the beginning that um, ideally we want to use all those alternative signals and bring them together, which is technically really difficult and it's only really possible with AI. And I'm sorry to bring that again into this panel, but it is also interesting to see how that is going to evolve and um, yeah, what possibilities open up through that. But definitely yeah, advertisers should should really get on it because it's still uh, um, yeah, a good moment to start with it and just rely on all these learnings that we already have. Happy to share them. Yeah. Thank you. I know the clock's ticking. We're going to uh, end with a couple of pithy remarks. The pithier, the better. You might even make the highlights real if we keep this super short. 
So I would advise you to keep it um, very, very punchy. Andy, um, I'd love a do or a don't from you uh, for the folks uh, online and the folks in the room. So something people should be doing or shouldn't be doing. Uh, nice and tactical, nice and actionable. Do test the sandbox. Don't bury your head in the sand. In both. <laughs> Thank you very much. Samir, a do or a don't, not both. That was uh, either or. Okay, perfect. I'll go for invest in your very data and uh, audience personnel to ensure that your brand stands out. Thank you. Um, form partnerships with publishers and advertisers. That's a do, I'm guessing. Sorry? Do form partnerships. Yeah, do, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. do yes. form partnerships. That's excellent. Uh, to just um, get traction on the topic of first party data. Sarah, you've got the final word. I can't top the, the sandbox one. Okay. <laughs> No, do run programmatic campaigns. <laughs> That's, I think, one that, um, yeah. And don't just rely on classical media because it's easier. Yeah. Then everyone do pay attention to these experts. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank um, you. And we are coming to the end of a fantastic DTD, which was truly virtual. Um, or hybrid, I should say, because it was some, some on site activity, of course. And I think learning is a good keyword. We could learn a lot, I hope. At least I could learn a lot uh, about many of the really important topics in our industry. And uh, I think we could also give a proof of how flexible not only our industry is, but also the IB Europe uh, with managing, uh, you know, uh, shortly upcoming challenges with uh, flights not, not uh, appearing how they should be. So. Thank you a lot uh, to the audience, to the experts, and also our hosts, and most of all to uh, Helen and Lauren for making all of this happen. So thank you very much for, for working with us. And then, as I said in the beginning, so we, we do have the recording. So in, in case you missed something, in case you want to share that with your colleagues, you can definitely see that um, on the IB website. Keep your eyes open for that. And then we also had the, um, the Europe's Attitudes to Programmatic Advertising report. Also, this one will be shared on the website. Um, and I think it's, it's a very valuable piece of information. So use that a lot, share that a lot with, with your teams, with your clients. And with that, I would give it back to, um, well, to, to, the, to, to you.